Adam here with Wholesale Country Supply. We're gonna go over the Seiko EL8015 um, and how to rebuild it. So there's gonna be four screws on your bait, on your, uh, attached to the base. So your top cover, that's how it's gonna be attached. There's little nuts that go in here too. And uh, so you're gonna have to unscrew it, the nut will fall down, then you just hold it and unscrew it. You know, it's not that difficult. So you're gonna take it off. You will have this shroud on here. Okay, we already took this one off just so we can do this efficiently and quick. Um, you're gonna have <clears throat> your chamber block. You have your hose attached. And so very, very similar to all the other uh, diaphragm out there, your uh, higher end ones. You're gonna remove this. If you, um, if you do this outside next to your septic system, which it, it can be done, that's how we do it, uh, you're gonna want to put your screws somewhere where you don't lose them. So you don't wanna drop them. The fit quickest, quickest way is just to put them in the top. That way you don't lose them. Do not try to pry this off, okay? So you're gonna wanna twist this until it comes off and then remove your chamber block, all right? So your, your kit is gonna come with diaphragms, chamber blocks. It's gonna come with uh, these right here. So it's gonna come with your uh, uh, shims. So uh, you need the shims and it'll come with some extra bolts and it comes with a new filter as well. So. We're going to get right into this here and remove this here. Pop this off. There's the diaphragm. Now, if the unit shuts off, there's a switch here. It's different than the other pumps. The switch is down below here. It's in the off position right now. It's been kicked out, I pushed it out. Um, if this switch gets hit, something is definitely wrong, okay? The pump just didn't shut off for no reason. So there, there's a reason that it, that it turned off. And 99% of the time, the reason is the diaphragm is bad. So um, we have people that buy safety screws for other pumps and they'll buy two, three, and we keep telling them that it's your diaphragm before they figure it out. I guess they don't read that we put, it's your diaphragm. Um, and we've had it happen a couple times where people just cut buying safety screws. So, okay, so you're gonna remove that. These diaphragms are set up, so there's only one way to put them on. They have this little mark here. They have a guide for the, where the magnet goes in, the post goes through there. The magnet on the, the Seikos is rare earth. Let me pull it out of here. So it is a rare earth magnet. It's neodymium. They only take 1.2 amps to run compared to some of the other ones. You have air, iron ferrite magnets. They're at 1.6. So it is a rare earth magnet pump. Um, there's a newer uh, model out called the JDK. And there's some slight variances. I'll go into that later in this uh, video explaining coil spacing and stuff like that. So it's not necessary to take this out. You can do inspect it to make sure it hasn't rubbed or got, gotten damaged in any way. So and you just slide it back in there and um, kind of your, your magnets in its place. So that's about where it's gonna go. So I take my diaphragm and my dog ears over here, slide this on. You wanna make sure that this part is touching this part here when you put this in, okay? Otherwise the, the diaphragm will bulge um, and, and you don't want that. So you wanna make sure that it's on there good. We're gonna put this one on. And you have to put the diaphragms, both of them on first. So we're not gonna use the magnet spacer yet. You don't need that till later. Um, so if you put the magnet spacer on now, you will find out that it'll just be sloppy and all over the place and you're thinking, oh, I gotta do this and I gotta do that and you don't. So. Uh, 
Okay, so we have one on there. Turn this around. And here's the dog ear. I'm gonna push this over. Make sure the magnet is in place. You don't you don't have to reuse the bolts. We're just we're reusing them so we can do this quicker. You get new ones. I mean nuts. Have to reuse the nuts. Okay, so not a problem if you do reuse them. Let's say you lose one or something like that happens. So I'm going to make sure that my magnet's touching the diaphragm. And everything's in place. Everything looks good. Okay, so I have this one over here still that goes in. These are all good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my shims, okay? So I'm gonna take my shims, I'm gonna put them in place, I'm gonna push the magnet out. Okay, and the reason I'm going to do that is the magnet, <clears throat> if it's not aligned, but what happens to a lot of guys in our business is they rebuild a pump and uh, the pump won't, uh, the pump runs for a while and then it stops. And they're like, why did the pump stop? Or they don't rebuild. And the reason is they didn't use the magnet alignment tool, these here, these shims, to properly do this. Okay, so I'm gonna take this flat head here and move this over. So the Seikos are a little trickier to rebuild than the other pumps, but um, it's just due to the, what, what it really has to do with is coil spacing. So you have to use the magnet alignment because you can't have um, your coils off. You can't have your magnet off, I'm sorry. So your, your coils are spaced tighter together. So they do that for uh, space saving inside the, the pump, but it creates uh, you know issues when you're servicing the pump as far as you need other features to do it. Now the JDK, the coils are actually spaced a little bit further apart and it might only be a millimeter, but that millimeter matters. Uh, and it's actually a little bit more than that because when you go to rebuild the JDK, you do not need uh, any kind of alignment tool. You can just straight rebuild them, which is kind of a nice feature. A lot of guys don't wanna to have to do all this shim business uh, when they're rebuilding the pump. And because uh, other models are more prevalent in the industry, and they don't need a shim, is one of the reasons that they rebuild these without them. And then they get frustrated and they um, because four months later it breaks and then, you know, it didn't work. So, and this is why you put the screws in here is because you don't want to misplace them. So once we get this other one on, we'll turn this bad boy on and I'll show you the safety switch and how to engage it. story of my life okay and like I said before 
if you don't have to, don't use an impact. You can over torque it, crack the little ear here in your upper creek. And I've lost count of how many diaphragm pumps I've rebuilt, so that's why I use one. So the Senkos, you should get eh, anywhere from four to five years down here in Texas. Texas is pretty brutal on uh, aerators. It's hot year round. It, um, you just have more uh, issues with the with the pumps. So everything's lined up. Everything's good. So we have good spacing. Nothing's gonna move. I'm gonna plug this in real quick. We'll see what we get. Okay, so the pump's not working, and that is because the switch is engaged. So we're just going to move this switch a little bit, and you push it in right here. So we plugged it in, doesn't work. Push this switch in. Okay, so it's centered. It should turn on. It is pretty sensitive, so... <laughs> rebuilt a, a Seiko so you just um, take your little white shroud and uh, take your white shroud put it back on there and one of the things I will say this okay one of the things I do not like about the EL model is this little plug here will drive you a little bit nuts sometimes so you're putting this back on this thing's got to be lined up just perfect put those back on you take your these are the these are the nuts and bolts so this goes through you can put this on down here and it'll suck it up in there so you just get it going once it's in there it's locked in place and then you can just uh, you can lock down the pump so the pumps are very quiet. When they're open like that, all the diaphragm pumps are, are pretty noisy. Um, so that's that. And then I'll show you one more time. It should be quieter with that thing on there. The new JDK, the filter cover is actually aluminum as well, so that's pretty interesting. Um, but that's how you rebuild a, a Seiko EL8060, uh, 8015, uh, 8017. They all rebuild the exact same as far as the internals go. So uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, ask them, and we'll be glad to answer them. I hope you have a great day.